What's good everyone? Eric Oakley here and we're here for another beginner's tips. We're going to be talking about hyzer flips. A hyzer flip is where the disc starts out from a hyzer angle and stands itself up and can even turn and can do a whole bunch of different things. This can help you navigate woods, this can add distance to your game. This is such an amazing shot and I really want to give you guys some tips to help you all improve on how to throw that shot. So when first trying to understand how to throw a hyzer flip, we really have to get our angles down. And the most important angle is gonna be that nose angle. It's really easy and common for people to throw on hyzer and have the disc slightly nose up. And at that point, the disc is slowing down as it's out of your hand. So it's not actually going to stand up. So we really have to focus about keeping the disc on hyzer and pushing that nose angle down. What I like to focus on is really kind of driving my thumb into the disc and pushing my wrist down just slightly to make sure that nose stays down as I'm driving through. And especially on the hyzer flip, I'm really gonna be focusing on kind of keeping the disc moving forward. The more we do that, the faster the disc is gonna be out of your hand and you're actually going to see that play when the disc starts to stand up. So really focus on that nose angle and keep it down. When throwing a hyzer flip, you know, depending on the disc you choose, you might feel comfortable with a Vandal, a Maverick, maybe a Trespass or a Bounty, but it's all gonna be different on how much arm speed you need to put into the disc, depending on the disc stability. If you go more understable, you might not wanna put all your speed into it. You might wanna just make sure that nose angle is down and let the disc naturally stand up for you. But when we step up to something like a Trespass, or a Lucid X Zach Mountain Maverick, you're gonna really want to kind of drive the disc with a little bit more speed because it's, it's gonna have a little more fight to it. So it's really important to understand how much you're trying to generate into the disc. One thing I would suggest is go out in the field and try throwing those discs as hard as you possibly can. And then at 50% and understand what they do with those different percentages of power. So you know that, oh, I can hyzer flip this disc at 70% power and trust that it's going to do its natural flight. So when you come down and you need to hit a gap, you don't wanna be throwing that 100% shot at that gap, but you know you can smooth something out like butter and push it through that gap at 70%. So that's really important to understand how much arm speed you need to put into the disc and get the disc moving. It's important to keep in mind that you're trying not to put too much power into it so you do not lose the angle that you're trying to throw. A lot of times when people power up, they stand up and now they're not on that hyzer release, they're actually releasing it flat. And then you'll hear that common phrase, it's like, oh, that disc is so flippy. It's like, no, nope. you stood up, you rolled the disc. It didn't hyzer flip on you, you threw it flat. So understand that and really understand how much power you wanna be putting behind the disc. So we wanna really focus on the release angle and letting this disc work for you. We understand, you know, we've seen flight charts and you understand and you see it doing all these squiggly lines and you kind of question yourself, but that, that's exactly how these discs are intended to fly. So we really have to let them work. I'm not taking many felons and throwing them on hyzer flips because that disc isn't meant to hyzer flip. That disc is meant to fight and work against me. So that's when I'm kind of working the disc myself. But when you give me a Maverick or an Evader, I'm really trying to let the disc work for me and start it out on that hyzer line and really push it forward. So a thing to think about is getting this release angle dialed in to where the disc isn't going out higher than we want because then it's too high in the air and it's stalling out and won't get that actual hyzer flip. It all has to be generated going forward. I really, if I'm ever thinking about hyzer flipping a disc, I'm very conscious of my shoulders that make sure the disc stays on that hyzer angle the entire time as I release the disc. Once I see it drive through on hyzer, at that point I have done, I have done my part. I know that I've released it on hyzer, I've trusted the disc to allow it to work. And now when I throw this Maverick, you know at 80 to 90% power on that hyzer with the nose angle down, I know that it's naturally gonna stand up to flat, probably have a little bit of drift right, and then maybe pull itself back to the middle. So I need to understand when and how and what angle I'm throwing to allow those discs to work. Right. 
using hyzer flips and using these understable discs is we can, we can actually throw bigger hyzers. So these long pushing hyzers, allowing the disc to slowly stand up on a hyzer and carry around a corner can give it more lateral movement. You know, the same thing for these big hyzer flip to turnovers that hold, you know, and that depends on what disc you're throwing. So understanding, you know, when and what types of shots that you want to be using is, is really important. And again, I'm going to say it again, go to the field, try it out, see it in action. You know, and if you have the opportunity when you're playing a round of golf, try it. Try and throw an understable disc and make it push out around a hyzer rather than throwing that overstable felon and letting it dump just around the corner. Try and push one around and you control the distance and you control that disc around getting it around those corners. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to do, an amazing thing to ex execute. So if you really get really good at it, it's going to elevate your game. It's gonna give you another tool to use when you might be in some crazy situations. Right. So the last thing we have to consider, you know, the conditions. We have to consider the discs themselves. We have to consider a lot of things when we're gonna to choose to throw a hyzer flip. If you're still learning how to throw a hyzer flip, I suggest starting out with a bounty or something like a deputy, something that's a little slower and more understable so you can actually get the disc up to speed and see that disc work for you. You know, I'm not throwing a bounty or a deputy at 100%. I would only throw them at smaller percentages. So that, that's something to start with. It's choosing the right disc for the shot. And again, go to the field, see it work. You guys are gonna get sick and tired of me here saying that, but it's, it, I'm telling you, it helps a ton. So once we've chosen the right disc and we understand how to make it work, now we need to consider a couple other factors. The wind can be a really big factor. Heiser flips into a headwind are really, really difficult, and they're also difficult into a tailwind. Left and right winds can also impact the disc, so you need to really practice it and trust the disc. Wind can be one of the biggest deterring factors for you to be throwing hyzer flips. So if you are in a windy spot, it might be difficult to practice this and get good at it, but if you can understand how to play a disc and understand it through the wind and still hyzer flip into that wind, you're gonna gain a lot of extra distance and a lot of extra confidence. Now, we gotta think about elevation. Throwing up hills and stuff like that are gonna make the discs you know, fly a lot differently, even downhills. You know, put myself at Toboggan for the, uh, the D-Glow and I'm gonna be throwing my most understable Raider that I don't really throw for backhands up some of those hills because I know that that, that that disc, as I'm hyzer flipping it up the hill, it's never gonna turn over because it's constantly slowing down as it's climbing the hill. So it's gonna keep it moving straight and it's not too overstable to where it's gonna fade out early. It's gonna just work on climbing for me. So it's really important to go with a little bit more understable when we're climbing up some hills. And lastly is the shot shape itself. You know, if you feel confident that you can throw a hyzer through this gap and make sure you hit it and then keep it straight, that's the perfect time to be throwing a hyzer flip. And, make, and then it's all about making sure you put the disc and executing it yourself. Having that confidence to be able to drive the disc with the good nose angle, you know, making sure you've chosen the right disc, you understand the power levels, you, you've got the release angle dialed. That's gonna be important. It takes a lot of practice, but it is probably one of the most fun shots to throw and see in action. So if you, want to get, if you want to get better at this, go to the field, see yourself do it, use these five tips, it'll help you all a ton. That extra practice will go, will go such a long way in improving your game. Thank you for watching everyone. Make sure you guys subscribe to Dynamic Disc if you want to have more content on how to become a better disc golfer. Well, make sure to follow me along my journey and follow Dynamic Disc along as well. All the links are in this area, and as always, be dynamic. Right.